If businesses are built to last, short-term planning is something they should know like the back of their hand. But more importantly, it's the marathon, the long run, which is crucial to not just their survival, but growth as well. And that's where we come in to help. Welcome to Coinman's official podcast series, where our very own consultants help you see the big picture. Hello everyone and welcome to Coinman's official podcast, The Big Picture with your host for the show, Sahib Singh. Today's episode follows our series of discussions with our consultants on how the COVID-19 or the novel coronavirus pandemic is impacting the Indian economy and its business ecosystems. And today's sector in focus is broadcast media and its branches, where we've seen different categories and magnitudes of impact. Cinemas remain shut, while OTT platform usage is on record highs. Some movies are going straight to OTT, and some have deferred their releases by six months to a year. And even with the lockdown restrictions completely lifted in the near future, something tells me that the new normal might just not be normal at all. But there are those out there who believe that we won't be seeing this sort of a post-apocalyptic or let's say somewhat of a Mad Max scenario for too long, that life will, after a point of time, come back to normalcy. And to elaborate on this particular thought process, I've got one such person on the show today as my guest. I welcome Amrita Deol. Currently leading Coinman's Corporate Secretarial Services as an Assistant Manager. And today, we'll be discussing with her the current state of the broadcast media sector in India and what, according to her, can be the way forward. Amrita, I welcome you to the big picture. How are you doing today? Hi, Saab. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well, Amrita. So to get right to the point, let's uh, begin with our discussion. And um, I want to start off with some basics here. So... I think all of us acknowledge that there is an insurmountable need of good content, be it in any shape or form, and the broadcast media sector actually takes away a big chunk of this cake. Now, we're supplied with good stories via films, we've got the spectacle of spectator sports, there's TV shows, there's daily soaps, etc. All in all, the ecosystem in and of itself is like a well-oiled machinery, so to say. Right now, the situation, contextually, seems to be as bad as the last season of Game of Thrones, and it's like we ourselves are part of the movie contagion because of the pandemic, of course. The pandemic has, uh, I'd say, somewhat taken the joy out of these things. And it raises quite a lot of questions. Earlier, we witnessed people coming out with new material like clockwork and with OTT platforms booming. It was like India had stepped onto the scene in grand fashion. And right now, the situation is reversed. The demand is on the rise, but the supply is challenged. So if you were to give your initial thoughts on how the pandemic's supposed as well as actual impact has been, how would you do it? Uh, well, Sahib, COVID-19 pandemic has had a major effect on the entertainment industry. And I basically feel that it has a dual impact on the entertainment industry. Like on the one side, it is turning out to be a quite bad for films and cinemas, including events, theatres, live sports, etc. As they are witnessing a dramatic fall in attendance due to social distancing norms. And on the other side, turning out to be a boon for digital entertainment platforms, OTT platforms especially, and even TV channels for that matter. Uh, if we take a look at the negative impact, so the, you can see that the upcoming events have been cancelled or delayed. Uh, these include IFA, uh, IFA Awards 2020, Indian Gaming Expo, IPL, etc. Due to which most of the companies in the entertainment industry have experienced huge losses you know, which is estimated to be around know, 30 billion. Also, the live concerts, including live plays and theatres, have been cancelled due to social distancing norms. Although some smaller live events are streaming digitally, but the revenue opportunities are significantly lower. As for, you know, if we talk about films, so various market surveys have shown that revenues have been drastically reduced since there is a delay in releasing of new movies, thereby affecting their box office revenues. So even shooting of various films have been stopped in the midway during this period. And this will impact their proposed completion and releasing dates. And also cinemas are shut and they have been closed from very early March only. Like even before the lockdown started, which has impacted all cinema and their revenue. So if we look at the brighter picture, so now the brighter side of the picture is for the digital platforms. Since the lockdown period has led to a boom in the TV and this OTT platforms all over the world. 
you know with indians uh, uh, getting their dose of entertainment through fiction tales historical pieces mythological stories and supernatural thrills so uh, according to the report by broadcast audience research council tv consumption in india is increased by 38% over the pre covid period people are watching tv for all 7 days now with an increase in 47% of viewership further engagement on ott platforms has increased by 14% to 58% though the tv viewership has increased it has a lack of fresh content and also the news channels are very popular as viewers follow covid-19 updates on real time basis and you know these days impressively many films are directly releasing on ott platforms rather than on cinemas so yeah this situation seems like when one person loses something another person gets it so amrita this surely i feel calls for a helping hand from the government considering the dichotomy of the situation now there's a feeling across the domain that authorities have been very active in this particular sector but for the wrong reasons so take for example the censor board in india is fairly active in terms of censoring content which it deems as inappropriate common consensus shows that not a lot has been done to help the sector when it has struggled especially now during the lockdown period Firstly I think India is yet to take fully advantage of the OTT arena even though it has made quite a decent stride in launching its own platforms take for example Hotstar or Old Balaji or Z5 for that matter but we'll keep that aside in terms of original content production for now let's focus on modes of distribution which practically see a mass turnout now this can include theaters multiplexes etc so given the overall impact of the pandemic do you believe enough measures are being taken by the government to keep things afloat or do you believe there is more that can be done yes sahib so covid will have its after effect on the entertainment industry for sure like as per the uh, news reports public gathering will be restricted for a considerable period of time post lifting or complete lockdown also so keeping this situation and the fact that cinemas theaters and events results in public gathering such sectors are still restricted by the government and are not allowed to open where most of the country is open now so in these circumstances if these industries are closed for say 4 to 6 months there will be huge impact on them as how will they pay their salaries how will they pay their rents and other expenses during this period like i was reading somewhere that few companies have enforced force majeure clause under their agreement to avoid paying rent during this period so now as per my view the government should also consider these industries as well and shall give permission to them in open in a staggered manner like they are giving permission to the other industries so they can open in a staggered manner by following the social distancing rules and other guidelines issued by the ministry of home affairs like other industries they may operate at 40 to 50 percent capacity and they can keep a thermal scanning at their entrance gates they can provide sanitizers they can provide masks they can maintain distance between their seats by giving said relaxation they may generate some revenue and will be able to survive in this tough situation further i think the government can give relief to these companies by way of reduced tax rates you know reducing gst rate on output services introducing cash basis for gst liability rather than invoice basis they can provide additional exemption and reductions under income tax and uh, they can provide loans to such companies at reduced interest rates they can provide interest free moratorium period for existing loans and they can you know create some specific stimulus package for such industries to support their expenses during this period uh, you know i was also talking to one of the person who works in uh, this entertainment industry only he was telling me how these industries are working on new policies like uh, these companies are indulging themselves these days in building new strategies like how they will operate post lockdown also you know as per my suggestion they should incorporate some learning to streamline some processes to perform better next time in case this type of situations comes again in future and they also work on to develop some credible succession plans very interesting suggestions amrita especially considering how there needs to be a balance between those in the industry and from the government as well so if i were to you know set aside this aspect and move to the consumer side where consumption patterns are rapidly changing and evolving and basically deciding the direction of this industry so ott is booming undoubtedly and there are stats to prove it as well as there is publicly available data so recently z5 reported a nearly 80% surge in its subscriber base as per forbes and a dau rise of 33% which is the daily application usage old balaji reported a jump of almost 10000 subscribers a day to 17000 a day 
Netflix, on the other hand, reported a profit of 709 million US dollars in the first quarter of 2020. Now, given this dramatic surge in OTT platforms, both domestic and foreign brands, do you see permanent changes in the media consumption habits of the people in India? Or do you think this pattern will take somewhat of a nosedive after the lockdown? Because I believe that given the kind of production value which is being offered by the original content on these platforms, I won't prefer to go to a theatre unless it's a movie which demands an experiential format like IMAX or 3D viewing. So what would be your thoughts on that? Uh, well, Sai, uh, the long-term impact of COVID on the entertainment industry, considering rise in viewership and habit of OTT platforms, and the fact that initially the people may be reluctant in going to these places involving mass gathering will be more. So, however, as per, as per my opinion, eventually the impact will not be much. Like, take for example, pirated version of the movies are available once the movies are released. However, in spite of this fact, people go and watch movies in cinemas. When DVD came, people said that industry will lose its stream. So, if now content is available on OTT platform, a person who wants to go to a cinema, he will in any case go and watch movie. Since cinema is not about watching a mere movie, it's a complete package. It's a memory and an experience which may not be imitated on online platforms. And also, in order to get an IMAX and animation experience or to watch a 3D or a 4D movie, one will go to the cinemas. So, similar theory applies to live plays, shows and theatres etc. as well. Like, as experiencing a live show can never match watching a show online. Like, if I give an example, like recently, you know, uh, Ramayan and Mahabharat on TV are very popular. So, but I have attended a live play of Ramayan in which Mr. Arun Govil had played character of Lord Ram, the same character who plays, you know, Lord Ram in the Ramayana telecasted on TV. So, watching that from a 10 feet distance cannot be compared to watching it on TV. Similarly with Mahabharat, like I have watched Mr. Nitish Bhadwaj and Puneet Isar who have played role of Krishna and Duryodhan respectively on TV telecasted Mahabharat performing the same character's life. So watching plays and theatres live is completely different experience and people who cherish this experience shall definitely go and watch irrespective of availability of these shows online or on TV. Again, if we talk about live musical shows, I don't think so people will refrain themselves from going since, again, experiencing them live is irreplaceable. Like, obviously, if you are attending Anushka Shankar's live sitar performance and you are watching her video on YouTube, there is a huge difference. So from all these examples, I truly believe that this industry will revamp itself in the coming years with success and will be a great crowd puller as it was before COVID. So, Amrita, while we agree with all that is being said that in, in due time, in due course, things will get back to normal. We can't help but speculate that what if an oddball sort of a situation does arise and the pandemic doesn't subside sooner than expected. So do you, given the rise of OTT platforms in general, see the industry bigwigs, and these could include production houses, investors, moving to OTT platforms on a majority basis? And would it help their case to bring custom-made experiences to the viewers at the comfort of their own homes? So now, as we uh, know that few production houses are releasing their movies directly on OTT platforms and have skipped the window run. Multiplexes like uh, Ironox and PVR even showed their disapproval of this trend on social media and have requested content creators to not script the traditional windowing pattern in this difficult time. Rather, they need support of the public in this tough, difficult situation. So if we think that maybe in the future the big wigs shall move to OTT, I don't see this as a long-term trend. This is a short-term only. Once theatres reopen, we can expect old, old business model to follow. Though some small films may be continued to be released online, the medium or big scale will definitely go for theatre release. OTT platforms have their own limitations and they can't buy big budget movies. And movies which do not get slots in theatres will obviously use such platforms. The big budget movies, uh, you know, cast usually high paid actors and their effects are of a higher quality too. Then it is comparatively smaller budget movies or web series which gets which usually gets released on ott platforms so big budget movies get major revenue when they release globally in theaters and as a consumer movies with large sets grand cgi etc be it avengers or be it avatar etc can be enjoyed in brisk screens only also with the help of dubbing movie can be released in other languages as well all over the world in order to earn more and more revenue also, in big-budget movies, 
you know you have seen that shooting happens at different locations in various countries however owing to the current situation right now where we are only considering their release but what about their making like currently we don't know if they will be able to travel much due to the current situation and the restrictions and even the fear of the pandemic if the flights are operating also we all know that ott platforms are not at all free people have to take paid subscription and should have a good internet connection and it seems that this facility is boom only for those who can afford internet and subscriptions everyone can't afford to spend their monthly incomes on subscriptions of ott platforms right so amrita it's very interesting that you mention of how shooting of big budget movies takes place and before i discuss if ott is suitable for big or small budget movies i want to dive into how business as usual will be affected especially owing to the social distancing protocols or people working from home and studios having a limited workforce now highlighting this in the sense of producing content that with work methodologies largely changing can we expect more animated content or different styles of content from production houses and since the channels or ott platforms can't continue to show reruns of old shows let's say in this case mahabharata or ramayana or have the same catalog of shows playing all the time yeah so we are now hoping that shooting of the movies may resume soon and i'm sure that in this interim period production companies have used their time to handle the pre production things like you know polishing scripts casting and exploring the future locations online along with the post production work like editing special effects etc and other tasks that can be done remotely but until a vaccine is developed is unclear what normal will look like the film production process is extensive and requires a large number of different groups that it, they require hair and makeup artists costume designers set decorators a- actors cameraman sound producers and all of them have to work together now in the new rea- reality of corona virus those jobs which are done in close proximity to one another will become more difficult the post covid world will not allow for a large set of people bustling all over the place it will need to be systematic contained and have proper social distancing guidelines in this scenario maybe with the help of the technology and creativity animated content can be seen more and also virtual production may help in getting the cameras up and rolling again like i was reading somewhere how virtual production can happen in bollywood it was mentioned that eros international a global indian entertainment company has made a partnership with epic games the company which is famously known as creator of popular game fortnite for using their tool known as unreal engine so this unreal engine is a real time 3d tool that helps to create a virtual world it was mentioned that actors have to act in front of a green screen only and the virtual effects can be added later for example if a director wants to take a sunset shot usually it is done by having the actors and crew at a set during sunset until the shot is complete so actor has to wait every day for sunset unless the scene is completely shot now if a actor is using a unreal engine the similar setting can be created virtually and scene can be shot in one go unreal has the potential to reduce cost dramatically and increase the speed this real time rendering technology will save a lot of time by providing creators ability to change the virtual aspects of production also it was mentioned that this unreal or virtual production techniques are not only helpful to heavy big budget ventures even independent filmmakers can make use of unreal in fact internationally a few independent filmmakers have already experimented with this new technology also uh, we all know that in the current times where a lot of locations are inaccessible and foreign locations are strict no no due to the corona virus outbreak those foreign locations can be created virtually also many broadcasters are already using this unreal engine for weather and sports channel as well very interesting input samrita especially from a technological point of view how this might require a nationwide disruption but let's look at the now for that matter and circle back to ott and its sustainability something that i'm really interested to talk about now one way to see it is to accept that ott is a best case scenario for smaller houses or low budget movies and the other side is to actually develop a revenue model which caters to the situation so i'd like to believe that there exists some form of adaptability and i'd want to know your thoughts on this Do you think there are practical business models which can be deployed to deal with prospective changes in the mode of consumption of media? 
I think Sahib, it is not about big budget movies only. Rather, it depends upon case to case. Like, what are the fund availability and what are the financial stability of the production houses? Like, smaller producers who have borrowed money needs funds immediately, thereby releasing their movies directly on OTT platforms. And also, these online platforms will help a lot of newcomers who are tired of making numerous trips to production houses and will be a great uh, help to those who want to showcase their talent. On the other side, if a big producer who has stability can wait to overcome this situation and release its movie on theatre post lockdown also. Both small producers and the big ones are right from their own perspective. Like also, you know, big budget movies requires a huge amount of capital investment and cost being incurred by them, I think it is not feasible for them to release each and every movie on OTT platforms. Maybe the situation will be as such that releasing of movies will depend upon their content. Like movies with content suitable for OTT could be released directly on set platforms and movie which requires, a, uh, you know, movies which have extraordinary special effects will be released in theatres rather than on OTT platforms. So, however, considering the current situation where cinemas are not allowed to open, we can see that a lot of movies are now releasing directly digitally only. And it is suggested that such movies may be released on OTT platforms on rental basis. Like for example, uh, a movie not to be released in cinemas may be released on OTT platforms on a payment of rental, say, rupees 50. Like from this, the OTT platform will charge that rental from a customer and, su- and from such one-time rental, a person shall be allowed to watch movie once only. And after that, the movie will be automatically deleted from its account. In such a way, they may, you know, there will be not much loss of revenue to the producers of the movie. They may charge the rent depending on the budget of the movie and the income they want to earn on the same. Or the rent can be kept at a lower level considering the fact that in a cinema, a person pays for a package or an experience, whereas on an OTT platform, you are simply watching a movie on a screen at your own comfort. So it's interesting that you bring up how there is, of course, a a very different situation when it comes to going out versus staying in. Now that we've discussed quite a bit about consumption modes which are in the comfort of our homes and at the click of a button, let's move to the aspect which involves going out after all. Cinema viewing, to be precise. Now, Amrita, people are becoming more and more aware, especially in metropolitan cities like Delhi, Bengaluru, Mumbai, etc. And I believe they'll be a lot more cautious. I I surely hope so they're cautious during these gatherings, especially since the government has now allowed reopening of the malls and the COVID-19 cases are still on the rise, all across the country for that matter. Now, this makes me wonder that speaking purely from a health and civil awareness aspect, do you think the idea of experiential viewership, uh, say via formats like 4D, 5D or IMAX, can it outweigh the idea of public health and safety? Number one, is there a way to strike a balance? Uh, Number two, and also to what extent do you see media companies or brands getting impacted? I'm especially referring to the ones which lease or buy these theatre spaces. Number three. Oh, well, Sahib, I think as per my view, it will be a short-term problem only and eventually people will come out from it. Like if we see initially in the month of March, we were even afraid to go to the market to buy groceries and other essential items and for that matter, go to our workplaces before lockdown. However, as on date, people go and buy both essential and non-essential products after taking precautions since most of the shops are now open. So people these days very much know that they have to live with this situation. So accordingly, whenever the government will give permission to cinemas, theatres to open up, maybe in the beginning they will be reluctant, but I think they will move ahead for sure. Like as I mentioned previously, the cinematic experience cannot be compared to OTT platforms. And also we need to keep in mind the precautions as well as health is the first priority. And yes, I I agree with this thing that a lot of stuff is required from industries and as well to gain back the customer's confidence and give the audience the assurance that a cinema is as safe an option as anything else. Like groups like PVR and Inox are working very closely on safety, hygiene and social distancing norms. They are, they are working on this um, policy that apart from sanitizer stations, hygiene kits, paperless transactions and regular, rigorous disinfecting procedures every day, they will introduce seat distancing through cross allocation of seats. Like this model ensures that there will be no seated behind, ahead or adjacent to the seat assigned to a customer. So online booking will be programmed to allocate seats in that order. 
so movie shows would be scheduled in a manner to avoid overlap of an entry intermissions and exit to avoid overcrowding of lobbies and restrooms so maybe once people will come to know about all these facilities they may start looking towards them and life will come back to normal once the virus scare is over and people will look at this as a phase in their lives so we can just hope that this time shall pass too so amrita there are several other indir- indirect employment generation factors which are connected to this industry and cinemas in particular for that matter ranging from the guys who control the food kiosks at theaters to the ones who are responsible for selling the tickets or the ones who even check your tickets for that matter there are very small stakeholders which may be looking at a lean period if the world were to go ott in majority so how would you look at the employability issues in this particular sector keeping the pandemic as the context cinema and theater industry is an employment generating industry and labor oriented industry which provides employment to huge number of employees if the movies will be released directly on ott platforms in long run then cinema industry will not require much in place that will result in unemployment thereby resulting in reduced demand and a vicious circle of ek downfall in economy so economy is a combination of demand and supply if there will be more unemployment in the economy it will result in reduced demand and consequently reduced supply so as per my view time will tell the actual situation once the lockdown is completely lifted and government shall allow these industries to open along with the crowd coming at cinemas like i mentioned earlier that maybe in the starting people will be unwilling but eventually they will go and watch movies in cinemas so accordingly the employment of those people who sit at the box office or who control the food stations will depend on the same maybe people will book tickets online only and will not buy you know tickets from box office counters so there will be slashing at that particular counter and also maybe people will avoid consuming food and beverages from cinemas so i think no one can predict this maybe the number of counters kiosks will be reduced overall so also maybe when demand will recover the people who have pulled out from their respective jobs may be reappointed i hope this will be a temporary distress only so amrita very interesting inputs again as to how you believe that eventually life will come back to normal i like how this is an optimistic point of view and how you essentially suggested there are of course ways to combat the situation which is not just at hand by measures where we need to control everything but we can also look at this opportunity as somewhat of a disruptor and use the pandemic as a catalyst to move into a new tomorrow so i thank you for that but before i close the podcast do you have any closing remarks let's say for the industry or do you think what more can be done or just any observations which you've had so i'd like to sum up i would like to say that yes there is a problem of covid-19 yes there is a lockdown there are issues in the entertainment industry there is no revenue there is unemployment but i being an optimistic person truly believes that entertainment industry will bounce back from this and will fr- flourish and keep us entertaining like you know as there are few famous sayings that um, it is only in our darkest hours that we may discover the true strength of the brilliant light within ourselves that can never ever be dimmed from this another one came in my mind obstacles don't have to stop you if you run into a wall don't turn around and give up figure out how to climb it go through it or work around it so from these words i believe that post pandemic entertainment and viewing experience will be surely different from both in- industry and the viewers and hope it will be a better and improved version and we can see the best of the entertainment industry and i would like to thank you for those lines and for the poetic conclusion to this podcast and thank you once again for joining me on the show today it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you thank you sahib and that brings us to the end of the podcast ladies and gentlemen stay tuned for the closing notes and we will see you on the next episode of the big picture <laughs> Be sure to check out all our other podcast episodes as we are now live on platforms like Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube and Castbox. Drop us a mail at info@coinmin.in to let us know what more you'd like to hear in the following episodes of the big picture. Like, share and subscribe is the usual drill and we will see you on the next episode. On the next episode. <laughs>